be. Hello all you hardcore boxing fans out there, how are you doing? It's Big P here. You know, don't you? You know. That's why you've tuned in. I'm the voice of hardcore boxing. We're the channel that does things and says things that nobody else dare say or do. Isn't that right, Coogan? Isn't that right, Rob Tebbert? <laughs> Arseless. Arselickers. Today I'm joined by James from Boring Berkshire. Is it Redding? How you doing? Redding, Porky, yeah. Yeah, Redding. How's it going, mate? You right? All right, you're a boxing fan, James. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A few years, yeah. Are you hardcore? <laughs> <laughs> hardcore, yeah. I mean, what's hardcore? Not not being a Sky fan, I guess. Is that that's hardcore? Uh, well, hardcore is basically when you just don't buy a pay per view, I think. <laughs> and you get a yeah. No, it just means that you, you live and breathe it every day and you're interested and you're following the, the soap opera that boxing has become in the last 10 years. Uh, look, it doesn't bother me if you're not hardcore. You're a boxing fan and that's the main thing. So what would you like to talk about today, James, before we talk about you getting me some sponsorship? <laughs> I'm only joking. So how, how are you? Are you all right? Yeah, not too bad. Man. Not too bad. Um, I'm off this week, so it's good. It's, it's good. It's just relaxing. Have you been watching boxing, boxing this weekend? Yeah, I watched the um, Yoka fight on Friday. No. Um, and then some of the, the American, Eddie's American card on Friday evening as well. And then the Joyce, the Wah fight. And then, the, well, the card, but the card was a bit disappointing. But the fight, the headline was, was great. So, yeah. Yeah. Uh, so what fight do you want to talk about first? And there's only one fight to talk about first, isn't there? Dubar Joyce, yeah. Dubar Joyce, what did you think about it? I think it was a great fight. I mean, it was you know bigged up quite a lot, but I think it lived up to the expectations. I think quite it was competitive. Um, I thought Dubois did pretty well, um, considering that he he has never really had much amateur sort of experience. Um, but Joyce was yeah, come forward like he's throwing this weird like weird jabs, but it seemed to work for him. So, um, you know, bashed up Dubois' face. Like, I think in the first round, it started swelling up. So it just kept on popping, you know, popping the jab out. Dubois didn't re couldn't really work with, with his work rate because he was, he was gassed quite early on. But then he, came, he had sort of like a second win later in the fight and he came back and won a few rounds. But yeah, yeah, great fight. Yeah. Uh, did you expect it to end like that, James? No way. <laughs> I, I call I logged it as Dubois points because I would I thought he would just jab him and Joyce would just take it because obviously his head movement's not that great. But you know, Joyce is an Olympic silver, you know, silver medalist. We can't take it away. And I think he was underrated going into it, wasn't he? I mean he's he's 35 or 34. 35. And he's been yeah. So he's been in like, you know, amateurs. And the pro fights he's had, they've been pretty like that Jennings fight is, you know, that's a very underrated win, I think. I know it was a bit, it could have been a draw, but I think, you know, I think he's got good, you know, good pro wins as well. Yeah, he's the same age as Ali as Ali when Ali fought Leon Spinks. So one of them things, isn't it? But mm. Ali had more miles on clock than jo than Joe Joyce. But uh I don't. It's twelve and zero. We eleven knockouts. British Commonwealth European champion. Uh, he's beat Bryant Jennings. He's beat former champion WBC champion Sivir, and he's ticked every box. Joe Joyce, hasn't he? I know he's not sharp as tool in box in a conversation. I mean, you know, if you went out for a night out with him, it it, it wouldn't be that interesting, would it? But. Uh, <laughs> He can fight, can't he? He's got an orthodox style, an orthodox style, hasn't he? And it's work. It works for him, so people should get behind him. He's not put a foot wrong, and uh, I wish him all the best. But for me, the main talking point is what happened after the fight, the media storm, the propaganda, the AFL boxing social for the f f ever since then of done nothing but hammer him because they're controlled by matchroom if they're not controlled by matchroom 
I've got statistics here in my computer that shows they are. For example, Exhibit A, Your Honour, as the great legendary Ultra Tech Sports says. Exhibit A, Your Honour, is Anthony Joshua quit against Andy Ruiz. But nobody said a word, did they? Hoogie Bear didn't say a word. He weren't interviewing people about the big quit, were he? I think only Dave Allen said something. And uh, nobody else said a word, not Tony Bell, you. Mark, you're a hater for saying that. Why am I? Nobody said a word, but they've been pushing it all day Sunday. IFL. People were doing an interview with IFL or Boxing Social, then jumping onto the, 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 the other channel to do another one. And it were going round and round and round in circles. And you're putting your TV on and you think, I've seen that interview once, and I? Oh, no, he's talking about the same old thing on a different platform. And this went on and on and on and on all day yesterday. It was just something like 29 interviews on one and the 29 that went on one, 23 of them went on the other or something like that. And it's growing by the day. This was a British Commonwealth and European title fight. Joshua's was a world stage one in New York. And nobody said a dicky, not a dicky bird. And it leaves a foul taste in my mouth, foul. And I've not seen the Eddie and IFL interview that he did this morning. But we all said, oh, Eddie's story will be out in Monday morning on IFL. And they, there you go, it were, wasn't it, today? Have you seen it? I haven't seen the Eddie one, but I've seen the um, I've seen a few of them which I couldn't really watch. They're just that bad and that biased. You'd yeah. think that a kid, 23-year-old, who's not really had much amateur experience, just thrown in the deep end with Joyce, who's a seasoned, you know, Olympian. Um, they they back him a bit more. And considering he's British as well, you'd think that Matchroom would be sort of all over, like trying to defend him and be like, well, fair play for stepping in there in the first place. Because none of none of the other like AJ, yeah, fought Dillian White, didn't he? At British level, that that was a good, you know, that was at the time that was quite a big level, but you know, it's a bit embarrassing to be honest. And it's usual who like the whores of of um you know match from coming out like Matthew Macklin as well. I think was was coming out saying, oh yeah, he quit and this and that. Um, and then he didn't. And then we they actually got the tweet up of Matthew Macklin saying. Oh, he didn't. He didn't even call out Kell Brook when that happened as well. Um, and I, I like Kell Brook, and I, I hate when people call him a quitter as well. But I think Dubois stuck in there longer than a lot of people. His eye did. went round three, didn't it? And he stuck in there till tenth, didn't he? And, and, and yeah. people are saying he might not fight again. I've, I've heard today from somebody front boards told somebody who I know a trainer in Sheffield, and he, he's told me today that they're saying he might not fight again, but yet. We've got all these people, and watch watch them all backtrack if any anything bad comes out about this young kid at the good bar. Watch them all backtrack. Do you see where I'm coming from? Mm. Uh, I've got no time for backtrackers, mate, at all. But it is what it is, isn't it? We were sold Dubois as this killer, this and that, and he has been so far, so that's brilliant, but he come unstuck against Joyce now. I suppose hindsight's a wonderful thing, isn't it? But now, looking at it, maybe he was rushed a little bit. Maybe he needed another year. But at least he took the chance and rolled the dice against Joyce because Dylan White didn't want to go near him, did he? They were offered the fight. Derek Chisora, I know you're watching, Derek. You were offered the fight, weren't you? And you didn't want to know about Joe, Joe Joyce, did you? You you were offered the fight. Now, what well, he offered 800000 to fight him and it was going to be pay-per-view. This was, was it two years ago. He didn't want to know Derek Chisora. White didn't want to know. Nobody's wanted to know a fight with Joe Joyce. So this is how I look at it. People in glass houses shouldn't throw stones. And this is why Helmet of the Month this week is going to be biblical. Helmet of the Month is out Wednesday. And it is biblical, let me tell you. Biblical and not to be missed. So we've just been adding all votes up today. And uh, by the time this is out, you'll not get a chance to vote anymore. So it looks like all votes are in. And I'll tell you how, how biblical it's going to be. Johnny Nelson just missed out on the top 10. 
John, Johnny the Company Man Nelson and Mr Bean just missed out on top 10. Johnny were 11th, so he didn't make the top 10. Bean were just a few places after. They didn't make the top 10. That's how mad Elmets of the Month is this month. But uh, they've all, they're all copped it this month. But shocking, shocking interviews, shocking tweets. Tony Bellew, his tweets are shocking. He makes everything about himself. Macklin, Dave Caldwell doing interviews on a daily basis on two or three platforms, repeating the same old propaganda. Dave Caldwell, I know you're watching. All you're good for is texting fighters, telling them they're doing great and you respect them and you can't wait to see them fight again and all that. You're doing it in case they get beat because then you can hang about with them and move in for pay-per-view money. I know what your game is. Seen it with Chisora, seen it with Dylan White. I know what your game is, Caldwell. You're just a little sneak who hangs around for crumbs, Penfold. But, you know, it is what it is. I say things that nobody else dare say. Nobody dare challenge me on it, on my channel. Nobody. Nobody wants to come in here and say, I don't agree with that, because they all know I'm right. You know that, don't you, James? That's why you're on yeah. it. That's why you're part of the porky circle. Hundred percent, hundred percent. No, I, I just want to echo what you said. I mean, I, did you see the tweets that Eddie Hearn was saying about um, like scoring? Because I think there was one card which had the bar, which was quite like, won quite a lot of the rounds. And Eddie Hearn was like, "Oh, he was up eight rounds. I can't believe it." And I just think, did you see the hypocrisy there? Hypocrisy! Oh my God! How many, uh, how many cards have they had? The Katie Taylor, uh, we other different judges, could have lost them two fights against Bassoon. Then you've got Lewis Ritson, he, he had an hometown decision. He, he, the list is endless. Ricky Burns has had hometown decisions. You know, Conor Ben had one, didn't he? The Payano fight the first time. Uh, what, what was it, a six round fight, and he got dropped, dro dropped twice? Twice, yeah. <laughs> and, and, uh, and squeaked to win. What a unanimous win, what else? I, I mean, <laughs> <laughs> well, what's going on here? Did it, or or it, it referee decision or some referee? I think it's been going on far too long. They're doing what they want, but the natives are restless now. The boxing fans are the natives, and they're restless. They've had enough. We're fighting back against the establishment, aren't we, James? Hundred <laughs> percent, mate. 100%. Anybody, it's a shame, mate. anybody who wants a stream to watch boxing and don't want to pay for any th subscription channels, inbox me, porkycorner at mail.com. Not Porky's Corner, porkycorner at mail.com, and I'll give you a stream for the next boxing show. Cancel your subscriptions on all box on all sport channels. Come and see your Uncle Porky. I'll look after you. We're fighting back. Don't ask me in comments section. <laughs> Email me. It's not against the law where I'm, where I'm giving you. And it's a site that you can't get done on. All right? Save your money. Spend it on your children. Buy your missus some flowers. But, uh, all right then. Moving on from, from that shower of shite. Uh, the, the other fight that happened, Yoka against Ama. You want to talk about that, James? What did you think of that fight? Yeah, I think he made quite hard work of Ama, didn't he? I think from what I was watching, he just wouldn't really throw in the jab at all. He was just sort of like walking into him and letting Hamer sort of, you know, work on the inside and didn't really like it. Uh, and that comes from someone who I quite like Yoko and I think he's quite underrated. Um, and I actually think he's quite a, like a problem for a lot of the heavyweights that's there. But yeah, I don't know. It, it was a fight where he, he looked comfortable, but at certain parts, I think he probably could have got him out of there, to be honest. But you know, it's a point points when it looks good on his record because Hamer's a name. Obviously, been in with with Fury and beat Price in there, I think, a few years ago. So you know, it's quite a good win. Um, I think I would like to see Joyce Yoka. I think that would be a good fight in in the future, a rematch from the Olympics. But yeah. Well, you what you got to understand is Yoka could turn around now and say he need he was practicing his art and he wanted the round. That's why he didn't knock him out. You know what I mean? But uh, I think he looks the part. Him. It's just that he's French, isn't he? It's going to go against him, isn't it, in an English-speaking world? Do you know what I mean? But he looks a million dollars, doesn't he? 
big six foot seven chavy, full head of hair and that. Oh, he's got all his teeth. So I'm sure he'll go a long way, won't he? I could see Eddie Hearn yeah. wrapped around him if he came over to London. Eddie would be yeah. on like Donkey Kong, wouldn't he? Age of French AJ, right? He literally yeah. is, isn't it? Isn't he's it? Not a French AJ, yeah, that's what they'd be saying, yeah. isn't it? He's a French AJ. Do you know do, do you know what I mean? But uh all right then, so Yoka and Joe Joyce, they're in mix. They're not gonna need a lot of, of fights, 20, 20 fights, 25 fights to fight for a world title because them days are gone of having all them fights. You win an Olympic gold medal, you're gonna get a world title shot in under 20 fights, aren't you? So he's probably 18 months, two years away from a shot him. Joe Joyce is probably a year away as well. From having, from having a title shot. He, he'll, he'll probably be 14, 15 fights. What, Joshua, about that? What, he's six, 16 fights, when he, when he 15 fights or something? If you've got a good pedigree, you'll be fast-tracked. So I wish him all the best. I wish Joe Joyce all the best. Uh, all right, then. Some action this weekend, didn't there? What is there? A couple of fights you want to talk about? Yeah, a bit of a pointless fight, Murray. Billy Joe Saunders. Um... Again, I don't really... How many times has Murray retired? It's been, what, three times? I've got nothing against him, but... Um, I just yeah. I just don't... Yeah, he comes to fight and he's, he's just limited, isn't he, at world level? I think... He's, and, and Billy Joe Sutton, as everyone talks about him, are, of course, can have problems, whatever. But it's been said that about three, three years in a row, hasn't it, basically, where he's just not really gone anywhere. And, uh, oh, yeah, welcome to the big leagues. <laughs> He's signing been, with Eddie and that. <laughs> he's been dug up, hasn't he, Martin Murray? Somebody's dug him up from the cemetery, haven't they? And stuck him in rankings. He's 13 months out at ring, and yet they've slipped him in, in, in rankings for a voluntary. How can you get a ranking Ooh. like that when you're 13 months out at sport? On the strength of what? I don't get that, me. I don't get that. So I, 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 have, a, I, I have a problem with that, a massive, massive problem. Massive. But I wish him well, Martin Murray. I like him uh, as a young lad who comes on here uh, from from his area. He, he's a big Martin Murray fan. Uh, so I, I'd like to think that Martin Murray will, will do his best at weekend. But all I see is Billy Joe Saunders uh, winning, winning fight 12 rounds to nil. he win every round. He won't lose one round. And... But, you know, it's boxing, isn't it? It's a two-horse race. Uh, Martin Murray is odds. Is he 30? Is he? No, not 30 to one. Come here, let me have a look at these odds. I've got some. Oh, I've got my phone off. Well, Martin Murray, the odds on him, if you want to have a bet on Martin Murray, it's quite attractive, the betting for Martin Murray. Very mm-hmm. attractive. But that's why he's at them odds, because he's an old man. What is it? His fifth wheel title shot. Yeah, yeah. I think, no, yeah. Man, he's on. He's been at top at mountain. He was robbed for a, two world titles. One he was robbed in Germany, robbed in Argentina. One he. So I feel for him, and it's last throw at dice. And you're going to get Eddie Hearn saying things like, "He's really up for this." And last thing you lose is your power. And you know, I've got a squeaky bum, me Coogan, about Martin Murray. He's, he's just giving me a funny look as if I'm up for this, Eddie. And and look. Billy will just breeze through the fight. But then again, we got this one at weekend, didn't we? So, might be best all you fans having a bet on Martin Murray. And who knows? It could even be a draw, couldn't it? That's an attractive draw, but I very much doubt it. But we've had a lot of surprises lately. So, I don't know. In a two-horse, in a two-horse race, it can go three ways. A win for either or a draw. So, it's worth a bet, isn't it? It's worth a bet. But I wish both combatants well. but uh, And I wish Mark Tibbs well, because I got on with Mark Tibbs and he's, uh, he's a trainer for Billy Joe, so I wish them well as well. But moving on, uh, the other fight is Errol Spence against Danny Garcia, isn't it? Mm-hmm. Is that what you yeah. want to talk about? I think yeah, yeah. Errol Spence wins that on points. Yeah, I mean... <laughs> Errol Spence post car crash. I don't know what what is going to be like, isn't it? Because I think I think he had like brain he had brain damage or a bit. It doesn't seem right. Like it doesn't when he's talking, it doesn't seem like he's all there anymore. Like before his car and before his car crash. So I don't know. Could you be. know what it sounds like? 
you know who he sounds like, Errol Spence? Mm -hmm. Dog, like that uh, cartoon, do you remember it? Deputy Dog. Scooby Doo. No, not Scooby Doo, Deputy Dog. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> sounds like him, doesn't he? Mm. Uh, but this is how I look at it. He'll have passed all his medicals to fight in the, to defend his world title belt. It was, he's just done a 12 week camp, so they've had all that sparring. So he's got through his training camp. So if he got through his training camp, why would the fight with Garcia be a problem? People keep going about, oh, what's it going to be like after his carcass? Well, he's just done a 12, 12 week camp. So I think he'll be all right. So all this about going on about car crashes and this and that, it was a year ago, wasn't it? So I, I'm not buying into all that. Errol Spence will win on points. Billy will win on points. That's my bet. So what else do you want to have a look at? Um, well, I mean, we have we, we were talking about on the, the, the old fandom as well yeah. for British boxing in, in general um, and yeah. how that's happened. Uh, this is how I look at it. Boxing shoot, shoots itself in the foot all the time, doesn't it? It shoots itself in the foot. But simple reason, all these organisations, Alliance, Amateur, GB, uh, Border Control, Bieber, and there's another one, I forget, is it EAS or something? Whatever. Five organisations, right, in this country, in Great Britain, right, and none of them have been given funding. Why is that? I'll tell you why. Because too many of these people have had the noses in the trough that long, they can't be trusted. Government are not going to say that. They're not going to come out and say that. But if they can get millions to horse racing, or is it is it greyhound race? They get greyhound racing, million, didn't they? Or two million? They give ice skating and and green. Is it green ground cream bowling or some or whatever? They've given them all funding, aren't they? They give everybody by boxing, aren't they? Badminton a couple of million. The reason these people in boxing are not getting in is because left hand don't know what right hand's doing. Everybody, his nose is in the trough. It's been going on for far too long. And they've more or less said, look, get gone. You're getting nothing. Unlucky. They can beg and plead and scream and stamp the feet, ranting and raving, screaming and shouting. They're not getting no. So if boxing can't get itself any funding out of the government, the powers that be that are running these organisations need to have a look at themselves and think, am I doing my job properly? Well, obviously they're not, are they? Because they're all techers, a lot of them. have been teching and taking and taking for years. And now, well, government has said, well, why should we give them anything? They've been teching years. So am I glad it's happened? No, because I feel for all these amateur clubs, I've got pals of mine who've got amateur clubs and they've had no nothing. Nobody's given them anything. They might get a bit of help with the rent, but they're not getting anything else. And it's been going on for, for far too long and it all needs ripping up and starting again from top to bottom. That's what needs to be done. And like I said, that boxing board of control, whatever money they've took out of boxing, consider it severance pay. Take the train. Go now. Robert Smith, Charlie Giles, resign your positions now and go. You're not wanted. You're not loved. Nobody likes you at these boxing shows. When you walk by people, you shake your hand, and when they walk off, they go, fuck it, that cunt. That's what people say. That's what they say at Wayne's and what they say at shows and what they say at after parties. They go slink about in background. They need to go now. Get gone. So that's my opinion, but... I'm like that, aren't I? I'm black or white, me. I'm not grey. Too many of them want to sit on fence and be in grey area, but really, they want to say what I'm saying, but they don't. Do you know what I mean? Frightened. Because they want to work with them, don't they? They want to be managers and be trainers and all that. Weak people. Weak. No good telling me. Talk board. I don't want to hear it. Talk board. Get them told. Do you know what I mean? Boycott them. Go get a license from Luxembourg or wherever if you can do that. Or go get one from Ireland or somewhere. Go get a license from somewhere else. There's more than border control, but it suits certain people to be involved with border control. Why? Well, that remains to be seen, doesn't it? I think we all know why. We aren't getting too political on here, but they're not my cup of tea. Uh-uh. 
but it is what it isn't. So what do you think about it all, James, from Reading? It's all a bit, well, I think the problem is that you've got all these different organisations where in comparison to other sports, they've just got one. So let's say like Rowan, for example, it's just got one organisation, whereas with boxing, you've got, you know, British Board of Control, all the amateur kind of organisations there as well. And there's no direct thing. So when the government's looking at giving funding, it's a bit like they don't really know how to give it out fairly, if that makes sense. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah, 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 yeah. You sound like my mate um, Rico talking like that. Bit of a yeah, shout out Rico. <laughs> hey? Shout out Rico. <laughs> shout out Rico Helio, my good pal. How are you doing, Rico? My old son, how are you doing? All right. Sounding like Mark Packing. All right, son. Sounding like Mark. <laughs> All right, Russell. All right, Russell. How's it going? Russ. <laughs> but no, yeah, you, you're right, mate. Look, listen, that border control, you couldn't trust them. You couldn't trust the, the border control to, to do to do anything, really. Could you? They can't be trusted, mate. They can't be trusted at all. They're useless, mate. Utterly useless. Always have been, always will be. And if you pull them up on it, they're just aloof. They're out of touch with what we want. They're out of touch with what we want. And it's been going on far too long, as I've said. It's been going on far too long. They need, they need to go. If you can't even get funding for sport, the biggest epidemic that we've ever had since the plague. What? Can't get any funding? Oh, my God. What are they doing out over there in Cardiff? What are they doing? Sat there drinking gin and tonics, are they? With your green slice of lime. Is that what they're doing? But uh, it is what it isn't, isn't it? But so, all right. And are you going to have a bet this weekend, uh, James, on boxing? I think I'm going to go, yeah, with you. I, I think Errol Spence, late stoppage, maybe. I think that could be a good shout. Danny Garcia has never been stopped in his career and he's been in with big punches. True. But Errol Spence is a bit, you know, you know he stopped Cal Brook, didn't he? So I don't think Cal Brook got stopped before. I yeah, know. His face were like Papa Mache, though, wasn't it, in that fight? Yeah, true. true. Yeah. I'd, and I think, yeah, points for Joe Saunders as well is pretty. Billy Joe right Saunders and Errol Spence double on points. I wonder what odds you get on bookies at that. Answers on a postcard to porkycorner at mail.com. Let me know, all you little porkies. I think that's about it, really. It's been. Emotional. Nice to meet you. You're a gentleman. Uh, I'm going to uh, go and make me send a nice milkshake now with a banana. So you look after yourself, Jane. Thanks for coming on and uh, you're welcome on any time. Just prepare to send some questions. We'll have a chat before and about what we're going to talk about. And there you go. Is that all right? Yeah, thanks, Russ. Thanks for having us on. I'll, I'll speak to you in a bit. You take care, mate. God bless to you. Cheers. And Bye. Cheers, mate. See you in a bit. Well, that were uh, James from Boring Barcher, where boring people live. Although he seemed pretty all right, didn't he? He seemed a nice kid. It's nice to speak to people that you've never met. And uh, like I said, at least he's got the knackers to come on here, hasn't he? Well, all you people who keep saying, I'm going to come on, Porky. I'm going to come on. I'm going to do it. There's good. <laughs> I can explain it. All you people are going to come on. You're going to do wonders, but no, all you do, you swallow cucumbers. Peace out.